somebody asks me how I'm doing today, how can you do bad on Easter? I told several people, worse comes to worse, it gets better. <laughs> because he lives, we can face tomorrow. Isn't it wonderful? We get to celebrate a risen Savior. Resurrection Sunday. That's what Pastor likes to call it. Resurrection Sunday. That's what Easter is. We have some special stuff happening today. Our choir is going to be presenting some music that they have uh, prepared. And Pastor Rick asks that you pay special attention to the words as, uh, they, as they sang. And he'll have a message in a few minutes. You have announcements that are on the, if you open up your bulletin, they're on the left side of your bulletin. And I will read those to you. If you are with us uh, as our guest today, we especially greet you. We are glad that you are here. And <clears throat> I want everybody to practice something. See this flap that's right here? Fold it. Start to tear it. See how easy it tears? Everybody, do that. I can't all hear you tearing. All right. Now, if you're a guest for the first time, please fill that out for your registration. And you can just drop it in the offering plate. Now, you say, well, I'm not a guest, and I still have to tear it. Well, go ahead and tear it off. You can your prayer requests on this. There's a place for that or any other thing you want to communicate to the church office. Uh, you can put that on there. Please drop your registration in the offering plate when it is passed. You'll also find that uh, there's an information table outside that you can pick up some information if you're uh, uh, with us for the first time today. We invite you to, to do that. All right, we are, I will tell you in just a moment, we are going to witness baptism. And what a wonderful time for baptism to occur because, you know what baptism is a picture of? Who knows? Death and resurrection. Death and burial. As a person's lowered into the water, they're covered over. You know, we don't believe in that little Babylonian stuff. You get the way they did the Bible, full immersion, and you come up out of the water. What is that? Resurrection. And a person testifies to their faith in Christ who died and was buried and rose again. And they testify to the fact that because they believe in Jesus, their old life is dead and buried. And they're risen to a new life with Him. Most important thing Dewey said, He is risen. He is risen indeed. So we've got to do it again. He's risen. He is risen indeed. Yes, He is. That's why we're here today. Thank you, Brother Dewey, for uh, welcoming everyone here today. Um, did we have an opening prayer? No. Then let's let's uh, start the service uh, with prayer, and then we'll uh, have baptism. Father, we come before you. I want to thank you for your love that you demonstrated toward us, in that while we're yet sinners, you gave your Son Jesus Christ, who gave His life upon the old rugged cross. He died there for our sin. He was buried in a borrowed tomb. He rose again on the third day, and today we can say He is risen because He is indeed. We love you, Lord. Thank you for giving your life to save ours. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. First candidate for baptism today is Matthew Foy. And uh, his mom is one of our secretaries here, and this is an exciting day for me as it is for him. Oh, my. <laughs> okay. Matthew, it is my privilege as a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ to have heard your testimony and to be your pastor, and I want, to, I want you to know it's my, it's my privilege as a minister of the gospel to baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. We're buried with Christ in baptism, and we're raised again to walk in the most The second candidate is Allie Johnson, and she and her family have been attending here for a while, and it's exciting to have them here in our church. Okay. night just a couple weeks ago shared with you the gospel you prayed and received Christ as a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ it's my privilege to baptize you my sister in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit we're buried with Christ in baptism and we're raised again to walk in the newness of life <laughs> uh, 
I have Steve's and Melita's in, uh, in uh, worship this morning. It's going to be a, a, a beautiful cantata, an Easter cantata. And as soon as he's finished, I have a meditation. It's going to be a shorter message today, so uh, just listen carefully to the words. It's beautiful, it's beautiful music. Thank you. I'm always a little hesitant to say this, but the words are going to be on the screen. And if you'd like to sing along with the choir, especially on like the Cosmo Lives, or I know I'm Demon Lives, songs that, that you might have to know, please feel free to sing along with us as the Spirit leads you. Amen.
was not a woman who was welcome at polite gatherings. On good days, she was simply ignored. On bad days, she was ridiculed and spat upon. But somehow, this woman found her way to Jesus as he was dining at the home of a Pharisee. She was so desperate to reach him that she risked the contempt of other guests. Even Simon, the host of the party, was saying to himself that Jesus would have nothing to do with her if he only knew what kind of woman she was. But she didn't care what anyone thought or said. She knelt at Jesus' feet in love and repentance. And Jesus responded as he always does to those who come to him broken. She's smiling on the outside, but she's hurting on the inside. It's getting hard just living anymore. And the shadow she has come to, painful things that she has been through, have left her feeling Then the only begotten Son of the Most High 
got down on his knees and washed their dusty, grimy feet. Behold the Lamb, serving those he loved, preparing them for what they were about to face, breaking the bread and pouring out the wine, just as his body would be broken and his blood spilled for their redemption.
Jesus had cried. It is finished in his last moments on the cross. And now it was in his death a sacrifice had been made. The debt had been satisfied. Our redemption had been secured.
What is the best part of this story? It's the part you tell about the day the truth of who Jesus is and what he did penetrated your heart and changed your life. Christ hasn't been raised either. 
And if Christ hasn't been raised, all our preaching is useless, and your faith is useless. And we apostles would all be lying, for we have said that God raised Christ from the grave. If Christ had not been raised, then your faith is useless, and you're still guilty of your sins. If our hope in Christ is only for this life, we are more to be pitied than anyone in the world. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead. After the resurrection, the early disciples visited the empty tomb. They saw Jesus alive. They talked to him, touched his wounds, and ate with him. All better, each of us has had a personal encounter with the living Christ. Christ has been raised. Our hope is real. Our future with Him is certain. We know our Redeemer lives. Who taught the song where to stand in the morning?
join me in prayer for this. Lord, thank you for this day we celebrate the risen Savior. But Lord, let us not forget what led up to this cross, the tomb, that's now empty. Lord, thank you for this opportunity to fellowship one with another and also to fellowship with you. Lord, bless these tithes and all free for the gift of our token of love for you. Bless them, use them, glorify your name. For these things we ask in Christ's name. Amen. 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 Well, if you want to open your Bibles to the Gospel of John, I want to talk about the living hope that we have because the living hope we have is an anchor to our soul. And uh, if you find John chapter 20, I'd like us to stand just for a moment to read this scripture. You see behind me a picture of an empty tomb. And it's still empty. <laughs> Jesus is in heaven today. And I, I want us to talk a little bit about how the living hope, his name is Jesus, he is our living hope. How he gives you the power to be able to live and face life. Life is not an easy thing to live, is it? There's just so much that goes on in life and many times we're discouraged and get down. And uh, I want you to know Jesus is our living hope and he will empower you to live a life in spite of what's going on in the world around us. So we're in John chapter 20 and beginning at verse 1. I want us to pray and then we'll read. Father, speak to us. Mostly today we, we want to hear your voice. And so we stand in your presence today. And we're opening our ears, listening to you. And we pray you help us understand it and apply your word to our daily living. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. It says in John chapter 20, verse 1, it says, Now on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb early while it was still dark and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. And then she ran and she came to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and said to them, They've taken away the Lord out of the tomb and we do not know where they have laid him. And Peter therefore went out and the other disciple and were going to the tomb. So they both ran together and the other disciple outran Peter and came to the tomb first. And he stooping down and looking in saw the linen cloths lying there, yet he did not go in. And then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. And Peter saw the linen cloths lying there, <clears throat> and the handkerchief that had been around Jesus' head, not lying with the linen cloths, but folded together in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who came to the tomb first, went in also, and he saw and believed. <clears throat> for as yet they did not know the scripture that he must rise again from the dead. Then the disciples went away again to their own homes, but Mary stood outside by the tomb weeping, and as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting, one at the head and the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had lain, wasn't there anymore. Then they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? And she said to them, Because they've taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they've laid him. And now when she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there and did not know that it was Jesus. And Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? And she, supposing him to be the gardener, said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and she said to him, Rabboni, which is to say teacher. And you jump to verse 18. It says, Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and that he had spoken these things to her. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, it's been a long day, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in the midst and said to them, Peace be with you. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side, and then the disciples were glad, and they saw the Lord. 
And in verse 30 it says, And truly, Jesus did many other things in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written, that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. You may be seated. Mary was from the city of Magdala. It's a city that doesn't exist anymore. It was a city that was destroyed many years ago. In fact, it was attacked twice, once by the Romans, and then once by the, uh, the uh, Muslims. So it's been attacked and torn down. There are some remnants of the city of Magdala there, but it doesn't exist as this great city that it was then. They did fishing there, they did uh, ta tapestry and cloth, they wove cloth there. And it was a fairly prosperous city once, but it, it was destroyed. The name Magdala means tower. It had a big tower there, and, and it was a, like an outpost. And uh, Mary was from that city, and she had been oppressed by demons. And then Jesus came to town. And when Jesus came to town, he delivered her from demons, seven demons. And Mary never forgot. You, you, you got to stop and think. You know, read Mary Magdalene. You know, but Mary from Magdala had been demon possessed, out of her mind. Jesus delivered her, and after He delivered her, it transformed her life. She loved Him in response to the love He showed to her in delivering her, and she was transformed. From that point on, she was always. Uh, near Jesus or at the side of Jesus' mother, Mary, different Mary, and uh, sometimes she's with John and then the disciples. But she is the one who came first to the tomb. Did you catch that? She's the first one there. And she was there to prepare his body for burial, but his body wasn't there. He had already risen. And so darkness was covering the cemetery. And some of you have lost loved ones during this past year. And all of us have lost loved ones at different times of our life. And it brings sort of a darkness into our life, doesn't it? It just kind of discourages you. You get sad. You can hardly even look up for a while. It's just a human reaction. Even if you and I know that our loved one is born again, and even if we know they're alive forever, and they're in heaven, and someday we're going to be with them, it's difficult. So several things I want to talk about are living hope. The first is... Our living hope, Jesus Christ, is light that overcomes darkness. In John chapter 1, verse 1, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. We're talking about Jesus now. And He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him nothing was made that was made. And it says in verse 4, In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend, means didn't overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John, and this man came for a witness, to bear witness of the light that all through him, that's through Jesus, might believe, and of course be saved from their sin. Now here's the key, once you remember this, each of us is in darkness until we meet and believe in and receive Jesus Christ. That's why much of the world is in darkness to this day. Because if they have not met Jesus and put their faith and trust in Him, He's the light. He's the life. And without Jesus, people live in darkness. And they do all manner of evil in, the, in this darkness that surrounds their personal life. And so each of us lives in this way until we meet and believe in Jesus. And Jesus is our living hope. Yet this world remains an unsafe place. So you and I could be a child of God. We could be walking around and we're following Jesus Christ throughout our life. And Jesus Christ, who is the light of our life, uh, illuminates our life. But we're all the people around us, if they don't know Christ, are living in darkness. And that's why the world is such a dark place. And so uh, He is our life and our light. And He's our hope. Uh, God loves us. And he seeks you and me while we were still in darkness, you understand. While we were still in darkness and without hope in this world, God loved us enough to send his son and Jesus came from heaven to give his life for you and for me. You and I would not be here today if you're a believer in Christ 
unless God had come from heaven to earth to seek you and me. Unless Jesus Christ had been willing to take your sin and mine and die for you and for me. Very important for us to never forget this. That, that that's, would be the condition we're in forever. Uh, except Jesus Christ sought you and me, revealed himself, and gave us faith as a gift. Through the person of the Holy Spirit, he enabled us to believe in him and to receive him as our Savior. So God loves us and he seeks us, even in this dark world. You have to stop and think about what it was for Jesus Christ to leave the glory of heaven, cast off the visible appearance of his glory, and to come among people living on this planet, living in sin and in darkness and fear and despair. And he came because he loves us. So when a loved one dies, it feels as though darkness enters our life. It also feels as though we are separated from that person because they're not here with us right now. And it becomes difficult to see light in your life when you're going through a time of grieving. And hope is hard to find in the darkness. Now the second thing I want to say is this. Living hope holds us. You know what I'm talking about. And he holds on to you, and he holds on to me. No matter what we go through, he'll never fail. He'll never let go. He'll never abandon you. He will stay with you through the good times and through the saddest day of your life. He's there. He'll never leave you. He is our light. He's our life. He is our living hope. It says in Hebrews chapter 6, verse 17, it says, Thus God determining to show more abundantly to the heirs of promise the immutability of his counsel, confirmed it by an oath that by two immutable things, his name and his word, his promise, <coughs> in which it is impossible for God to lie, we might have strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold of the hope set before us. This hope in Jesus Christ we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast. Now there was a song that was sung by the choir. It is the theme of everything you sang this morning. I know that my Redeemer lives. Y'all know where it came from? Huh, I read it. I was sitting there at a point over Clarence and I said, it's in my sermon today. It's Job. It's from Job. And it's uh, a time when Job lost everything that he had. He went through just a terrible downtime in his life. He lost all of his wealth, his property, his animals. He lost his children. He lost his health. His friends did not comfort him. He alongside and said, well, you must have done something wrong. That's why this bad thing has come into your life. The reason you lost your child is you must have done something wrong. This was not true. Not true. So Job said this in chapter 19. He said this. After all these people had discouraged him, he said, I know that my Redeemer lives and he, my Redeemer, Jesus, shall stand at last on the earth. And after my skin is destroyed, this I know, that in my flesh I shall see God, whom I shall see for myself, and my eyes shall behold, and not another, how my heart yearns within me. That's what Job said. Nobody else was encouraging him, but he had faith. Do you have faith? When things come into your life and you feel like the doom is just overwhelming you, and you get sad, and it's normal for us to grieve. It is normal for us to be some, sometimes anxious about things. It's, a, it's normal for us to have these different things that come into our life. It's a human experience. But one thing I can promise you, if you put your faith in Jesus Christ, like Job, you can say, I know that my Redeemer lives. And He will stand. Someday Jesus is coming back. And when He comes back, He's going to stand on the Mount of Olives. And the earth's going to split right there, and he's going to enter in through the eastern gate, and he's going to be king of kings and lord of lords in reality, our experience. We're going to see him and know him, and you'll know everything I ever believed. It is true. 
He is our living hope. The name of our church, we changed it from First Southern Baptist Church. We're still a Southern Baptist Church, but we changed it to living hope. Why? People in this world are desperately crying out for hope. They're crying out for light in the midst of darkness that's around us in the world. They need, we need, I need living hope. 1 Peter 1, 3 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to His abundant mercy has begotten us again, we say born again, to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. We're here today, aren't we? We're celebrating and remembering He rose again. He died for us. He was buried. He rose again. We know my Redeemer lives. Now, He's my Redeemer. But He's not just my Redeemer. He's their Redeemer too. My question to you is today, is He personal? Your Redeemer. Could each of you in this room today say, I know that my Redeemer lives for yourself, personal. My Redeemer lives. If you know Jesus Christ as your Savior, the Lord of your life, then you can say, the same as Job, the same as I'm saying, I know that my Redeemer lives. And you must be able to say this. How in the world can you live in this life with the things that come at us? It could be sickness. It could be death. It could be loss of our income, our job. Our, it could be family relationships that get strained with people that won't talk to each other. I hate that when that happens. Should not be. But you and I know that during life there will be times when everyone is in, the, in this room has faced darkness, difficulty, separation. Sometimes we brought it on ourselves. Sometimes somebody else did it. And sometimes we don't even know why it happened. You know, we just don't. But you can stand in spite of it if Jesus is your living hope. When Jesus came alongside of Mary, the Mary, uh, when Mary from Magdala, she thought he was the gardener. And I don't think it's so surprising. Have you ever had something that somebody handed you to read? And you thought you knew what it said, and what you what you read was what you thought it said, and that's not what it said. Have you ever had that happen? There's even a game you do at parties like that, where you where you hold up a flash card and you say, what does it say? And you put it back down again, and then you say what you thought it said, and that's not what it said. This does not surprise me that Jesus was there in the garden. This is why I believe the Bible is so true. It's so much like us. Jesus is standing there, and it's still pretty early in the morning. It's still kind of dark. She may well have had tears since she'd been weeping in her eyes. You don't see so good when the light's dark. At least I, I'm like, if I don't have a bright light, I'm like, I can't see as good as I used to when I was a kid. Am I the only one in here has that problem? Anyway, I need a little more light to see. And she was like that. She couldn't see Jesus because it was somewhat dark in the garden. And she was dark in another way. She was sad. She was gloomy. If the sun had been shining, she would have felt like it was dark. The one who delivered her from demons, who had suffered on the cross, and she had been there at the feet, standing there. She was there with Mary, the mother, wasn't she? She was there. She never, she never gave up. She hung in there even if it was her own life was in danger. She was there. And now, Jesus is gone. He's dead, buried. She doesn't know where they've taken him. She, in her mind, she just cannot believe he's alive. So he's standing right there next to her, and she doesn't recognize him. To me, it's just absolutely proof the Bible's true. That's the way we act, too. The same way. Don't think she was different. We're just like that, too. So she turns around, doesn't realize, thinks it's a gardener, and then he says, but when he speaks... His voice cut through the darkness. His voice was life to her. His life was light to her. It was darkness. And when Jesus spoke, it was like the light went on. And her eyes opened and she knew it was Jesus Christ. And he was standing right there next to her. And she cries out, Rabboni, teacher, master, because she knew then, the light went on, that she knew He was her Redeemer and He lives. That's the message of the Gospel of Jesus Christ. 
That's the message of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Living hope means that sin and death no longer has a grip on our life. No. Colossians 3 says, You, being dead in your trespasses and sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, He has made alive. Together with Him, having forgiven you all your trespasses, you and I never need to feel alone ever again. Death is a separation between us and someone that we love, isn't it? It's, it's really, that's what makes it so hard is they're not here with us. But eternal life, listen, eternal life is an eternal relationship. Death cannot take away an eternal relationship. When you have an eternal relationship with Jesus Christ, whether you're living or whether you die, you can't lose it. When you have a loved one, it could be a, a mother, a father, a brother, a sister, a child, a friend, who dies physically, yet they're a believer, we can say, I know that my Redeemer and their Redeemer lives and they're alive today and death cannot separate me from them. Someday I will be with them and they'll be with me forever. Eternal life. How long is it? Talk to me. How long is eternal life? Forever. Some of you have been reading up, huh? Eternal life is forever. It never ends. So you'll never lose your loved ones when they have eternal life. So my question to you, and I'm ready to close this message, is this. Are we living in order to die? Or are we dying to live? Are you living, getting ready to die? Or are you dying to yourself in order to live for Christ forever? Last scripture is this. John 11, 25. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? That's my question to you. Do you believe this? If you have faith in Jesus Christ, don't ever allow darkness, death, this world to discourage you from your faith in Jesus Christ. You and I can know we have eternal life by His grace through faith in Jesus. And we could stand and say, I know that my Redeemer lives and someday I'm going to be with Him. Okay? Could you stand with us? Steve's going to come and lead us in the song. I have a simple invitation for you, and the simple invitation is this. If you have never prayed and asked Jesus Christ to be your Savior, won't you please today, while you still have this day, you still have time, give your life to Jesus Christ even today. Someone else may say, but I've already received Christ, but I have never been baptized. I need to be baptized. If you need to be baptized, please come. I would love for you to come and We'll make plans for you and answer your questions about it so you can be prepared to be baptized in obedience to Christ. Third, you may be here as a Christian and you've been baptized, you're a member of another church, but you lived here, you're looking for a church. I have to think if you're here, God probably brought you here. I didn't, I know, most of you, I didn't. I didn't. <laughs> so I have to say if you're here, God knows it. And if you're looking for a church home, this is a wonderful place. It's a safe place. It's a Bible-believing place. It's a place where we love Jesus Christ. It's a good place to become part of and to be a minister in. So I invite you to come and join us. We'd love to have you as part of our church family. Whatever God's telling you to do, and some may say, I just need to come and pray. I've got relatives that need Christ. i got people who need the Lord. i got people who walked away from Jesus and they need to come back. If the Lord's telling you that there's somebody on your heart that you need to pray for, the altar's here. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say something that we don't often do. If there's someone here that needs special prayer, if you ask for it today, we will have prayer after the service today in the choir room. So if there's someone who needs special prayer, you just come up, let us know. And I'm going to ask our deacons to join me and staff after the service just for a few minutes. And we'll have private prayer with you, okay? Whatever the Lord's telling you to do, He's the Lord. We obey Him. Please obey Him.
it today that Jesus Christ rose again. That's what we remember. And uh, I hope that today you'll uh, celebrate that. The service this evening is being canceled, but my purpose is for you to spend time with family or with friends. If you have family, please spend time with them. And remember today, maybe at the table, you could go around and say, what am I thankful for to God? Or what did Jesus do that's made a difference in my life? Before you eat or during your meal today, just take a few minutes and share what, it, what, the, what Jesus Christ means to you at your table so that it's not just a meal, but it's also a time of worship at your table. And if you don't have a friend uh, or family here, get together with a friend. Just call somebody. And I, I actually think almost anybody here would say, it's okay, come on over. <laughs> and just have fellowship, because we all love each other here. It's a great place to be. Anyway, God bless you. Uh, and we have somebody to introduce. You won't be seated just for a second. This young guy here, and where's Allie? Allie, come on. All right. I got this young man. Can you all see Matthew? Matthew, step right here. No, step. There you go. There you go. That's perfect. All right. I am so happy. I've been watching this guy grow and uh, get stronger in his faith. He has a clear testimony. Come on up, Allie. You can stand right over here. These two came today on their profession of faith and they were baptized as, and, and, and they understand it's an act of obedience that's a picture of the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. We understand that. So are you as happy as I am to invite uh, and accept Matthew Foy and Allie Johnson as members in our church? Would you say amen to that? Amen. amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Okay, I'm going to ask them to come and hey dude. <laughs> I'm going to ask them to come up and to join me at the door. And as you're going out today, you can give them the right down to fellowship. I'm really excited to see you growing. They've been attending a church near their home in Temecula. You wonder where they are. That's where they've been going. But he wanted Pastor Rick to baptize him, and he wanted to be baptized here in this church. So I'm really happy he wanted that. That gave me great joy. Okay. Deacon's going to come and lead us in the closing prayer. And I just hope that next week, bring somebody with you. We're going to have a wonderful time next week. God bless you. Thank you, Lord, for this time we're in our house, for the opportunity we've had to fellowship with you. Lord, you're with us now as we go to our individual homes. Keep us safe. Watch over us that we may return again to fellowship one with another and also with you. For these things we ask in Christ's name. Amen.